The converse of the Pythagorean theorem is just another theorem that states something almost exactly like the Pythagorean theorem does. When we say converse, no, we're not talking about the uh, shoe brand, okay? Uh, what we're talking about is um, a rearrangement of the if-then statements. There's a lot on this page, so let's go through this a uh, bit at a time. The top thing says, if triangle A, uh, B, C, triangle A, B, C is a right triangle, then C squared equals A squared plus B squared, which is just a rearrangement of what we normally see, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, just written this way, it's going to make the converse parts easier. Um, the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, down here, says C squared, if C squared equals A squared plus B squared, then triangle ABC is a right triangle. And you, you might think to yourself that's saying the exact same thing. Well, it's not. Because up here, the green statement was after the then, and the green statement in the converse was before then and after if. Uh, the red statement up here was if triangle ABC is a right triangle. The red statement down here follows the then. So our if and then statements have been reversed. And that is basically what a converse theorem states, is it, uh, if you reverse the if and then statements and it is still true, then you've got a new theorem, the converse of that theorem. So the converse of the Pythagorean theorem just tells us if we've got three values and we plug them in for a, b, and c, and we find out that yes, indeed, the sum of the squares of the two smaller numbers um, adds together to make the square of the bigger number, then you know you have a right triangle without even looking at it. All you need are the numbers. Um, in related theorems, if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, then it's an acute triangle like this one. And if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, then the triangle must be an obtuse one like this. Okay, these kind of problems have four answers. One of them is acute, one is right, one is obtuse, and the fourth possible answer is you can't even make a triangle out of the side lengths that are that long. Let me give an example of that first and then we'll look at the acute right and obtuse. Problem number seven here has side lengths that are 10 and 12. Even if I stretch those uh, so that they are back to back in a straight line, so this is maybe the 10 and this is maybe the 12, if we need a third side to that triangle, well, it's got to attach at a vertex. And if the third side is 30, then our 10 and our 12 aren't even going to be long enough to reach the end of that 30 to make a triangle out of it. Another way to think about this could be maybe my 10 is here and my 30 is there and my 12 is here. It's not going to reach far enough back to get to uh, my 10 to close off a triangle. It, it just isn't long enough. Um, so the way to check for that is just to take your smaller two numbers and add them together, and that should be bigger than the third side. So 10 plus 12 should be greater than the third side, which is 30, using, the, again, the smaller two values, adding them together to be bigger than the third, the third side. That's different than the Pythagorean theorem. Um, that's just what's called the triangle inequality theorem to show that any two side lengths should be uh, greater than the third side um, by itself. Um, so there is the one possible answer of you can't even make a triangle out of it. Um, I'm not seeing any other examples on this page that show that specifically. Let's take a look at some that are going to be acute, right, and obtuse, though. So the converse of the Pythagorean theorem said something to the effect that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. We set it up this way to show that, um, well, we wanted the c squared to be on the left side um, for the sake of the, the symbol. If it's equals, that means it's a right angle. If it's less than, well, we associate less than with less than 90 degrees. That should tell us uh, that it's acute. Just like acute angles are less than 90 degrees. And if it's greater than, then we end up with an obtuse. And obtuse angles are greater than 90 degrees. So we need to keep in mind 
um, that we've got, if it's equals, it's right. If it's less than, it's acute. And if it's greater than, it's obtuse. And that only works if we've got the c squared on the left side of the equation, or the inequality. So we want to make sure that we set it up that way um, with the numbers. Now the question becomes, which one is supposed to be c? Well, since c has to represent the hypotenuse, it must be the longest side. So c needs to be the biggest of the numbers of our set of three numbers. Let's start out with problem four. Problem four says six, eight, and ten. What would be uh, the kind of triangle we would get out of that? Well, using the ten for c squared, so I've got c squared, I've got I don't know what goes in this box, and then a squared plus b squared over here. Um, if it's an equal sign, it's right. If it's a less sign, it's uh, acute. And if it's a greater than sign, it's obtuse. So substituting my 10 in place of C, still got my box. Um, well, I'm not going to put an A squared. Let's use 6 or 8. So 6 squared plus 8 squared. Here I get 100. Here I get 36. Here I get 64. And sure enough, those add up to be 100. So then I should put an equals in my box. Since I got an equals, I know that this is a right triangle. Okay, next example. Let's try problem five. Again, nine is the biggest value, so I'm going to use that for my C. Here's my box. Um, five can be A and seven can be B. And let's simplify this. So I get 81 box 25 plus 49. And 25 plus 49 is only 74. So we get a greater than symbol here, which means that this is an obtuse triangle. Now let's try problem 6. Um, in problem 6, again, 10 is the largest value, so that one needs to be C. Here's my box. I'll use 8 for A and 9 for B. Um, simplifying, I get 100 box. 64 plus 81, um, so 100 box. 64 plus 81 is uh, 145. And so that's a less than symbol, which means that um, answer to 6 should be an acute triangle. Okay, so now we've seen all types, um, and we just need to uh, practice with 8 and 9. I've shown you 4 through 7 now. Um, so for you tonight, work on 8 and 9 and determine what kind of triangles those are, and remember to show your work. Good luck.